Hey everybody, I am a little sick today, but we're going to press on because I am out of WordPress videos and you guys need uh, your video. I promised I would do one every day. And so uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to look at the contact form. And originally I wasn't going to do this, but I think it's worth you guys uh, seeing how this works. And I, I think I owe it to you as part of the class. And so we're going to go to the thing on the side for contact form. And I'm going to click this. And by default, this stuff is a mess. And it, this stuff is always hard to edit in WordPress itself. So one top tip, you don't have to do this, but one top tip is I would recommend if you don't have a code editor, even if you're not a coder, download Adam.io and it will help format some of this stuff. So my top tip is that I always have a file here called WordPress. And I just open that with Adam and then drag it over here so I write all of my tables and stuff like that in this so I'm just gonna kick this out of the way because uh, we don't really need it and what I do is I will drag all of this stuff into here when I want to format it and see what's going on I think it's gonna be easier for you guys to see it now you can see that all these things are sort of color-coded so if I were to drop these down uh, like that's a label and this is a div now a div is is a division um, you can kind of begin to see that there is some order to this stuff let's see here we'll do this there is some order to the way that this stuff is done but when you look at it in that textbook text box it just looks like garbage and so uh, what I like to do is drop these things down a little bit so I can see now a little fun tip here you can control click this stuff and drop that down and then I can come over here after this and control click these and drop this down and now all of a sudden you can see that uh, this is a division this is a division this is a division and what's neat about something like Adam is if you click on this one you can see where it ends because it lights up the other one blue so to me that makes a lot more sense what's going on um, now what is going on here is as we look at the form, we have your name, we have name, email, subject, and all that stuff. And then as we look over here at our form, we have name, and you can see that these two here are only taking up half the form. And so that's what this little thing where they added this uh, class in here. And so a class allows you to do some extra styling and things like that. So I just wanted you to see that this is not as much of a gobbledygook as it looks. Um, but what we're going to do, instead of actually modifying that one, we are going to create a new one. And so we're going to hit Add New. And let's just clear all this out for a second. So the gist of what you would want to do, to add a, an input you simply put what kind of input you want so we're gonna start with text because that's obvious now it's gonna generate a weird field name and the reason for that is because it needs a unique field name in the database and so um, I'm not going to use standard things we're just gonna uh, we're just gonna kinda put random stuff in here but let's say we wanna record and we want to know favorite teacher okay and then you can give it a default value and that default value can be either a placeholder or actually written in there. So let me show you what that means. If I come in here and type in uh, Mrs. Smith, all right, and I'm just gonna insert that and we're gonna be done with it. Uh, let's give this thing a thing called our form. We're gonna give it a name. Let's try that again. Okay, our form. So when I save this, I have been given this short code. Now I've mentioned that in an earlier video, but I'm gonna copy this and I'm going to go back to my pages. I'm going to open that. Well, I was hoping to open that in a new tab. I'm going to open that in a new tab. And what I'm going to do is in the contact thing, I'm going to drop that short code above the other one. So we're going to have our second form here. Uh, let's see here. Boom. And we're going to drop that contact form right there. Save it. Update the page and refresh so now what you can see is that mrs smith is actually text in here that is edited 
And that's probably not what you want. I mean, every once in a while, you may want to actually put a default value in a text field. But in this situation, what we want to do is we want to, let's go ahead and delete that. So what I'm going to do while I'm in here is I'm going to delete the contact form just to make it easier so you only see our form and I've cleared out everything just to make it a little bit more obvious. So instead of having favorite teacher as something that you can edit in the, the form, what we want to do is we want to come back here and we're going to add that element again, except we're going to say, we're going to call it teacher and then we're going to say favorite teacher. And then we want to say, use this as a placeholder. And you'll see that all these options here are doing is generating some text. And so now we're going to insert that and we're going to save it. And now when I refresh the page, you have favorite teacher, but as you start typing, it's going to overwrite that. So that's not actually going to be text in the box. I think you understand what's going on. And then at this point, if you need to edit it, you can do uh, favorite teachers and refresh the page and you're going to get teachers and uh, I could make it required and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to add a few more options just so you can get an idea of how these work. Email and URL are pretty much text, same with phone and number. These things are just made to, uh, to give us a, uh, to give us some better formatting, like as we add birthday. So I know I just put it in the wrong order, but we're going to save this refresh birthday is going to be smart enough to give us this little thing here um this little date picker which is kind of nice and email is going to be looking for an email and, and all that kind of stuff some of the ones that are a little bit more complicated may not be as obvious are drop downs and so we're going to say we're going to say this we're going to say uh car and we're going to actually let's call it favorite car And then you'll see as soon as I jump down here, it's going to combine those together because you can't have spaces. And so we're going to say Honda, Toyota, Ford, Chevy, like that. And whether we want to allow multiple selections or not, whether we want to make it required, we'll go ahead and make it required. And we're going to insert that. And now you'll see that we have this select option called favorite car. These are the options. And so we save that and we're going to get a drop down box. And so there you go. We have our drop down box of options now. In this situation, what if we actually want to put a, uh, a description of what we're asking for? So all you would type is, what is your favorite car? And boom, you have that. Uh, so you can see it's not too complicated. The check boxes would, would work exactly the same way. We'd go one, two, three, four, and uh, put a label first, check box last. You can decide how you want to do that. I'll refresh the page. One, two, three, four. You can select multiple ones. The main difference between a check box and a radio button is usually a radio button. You can only select uh, one. So we're going to do this. Insert this and save it. I don't really like that it puts it at the top, but I'll bet it goes wherever my cursor is. So you have A, B, C, or D, and you'll see that only one is selected at a time. Uh, acceptance, you can put like a little thing, you know, hey, by inserting this form, we can sign you up and take your firstborn and all that stuff. Uh, and then finally, you would want there is a quiz. I've never used that. There's a file upload. I'm not a big fan of letting people upload files to the website, but it's there if you need it. And uh, finally, a submit button. And so we will just put submit form and insert. Save it. Now we're going to want the submit button at the bottom. So I'm going to copy this down here. And oh, you don't want that. Save it. And we're going to have a submit button. So fantastic. We've made a form. We've gotten all of the options but you'll see that we still have this exclamation point over here and so what we need to do is we need to make sure that our configuration is set up now ideally you want these things to be from the domain that your website is on a lot less likely to get flagged as spam and so you would customize this and you would say uh, email from another maker.com 
and then you would say reply to and you would say we'll just say dan at another maker.com like this and that should be pretty good let's see here see how that looks save that good so that little error went away it's happy now what's interesting here is you have this thing here uh and this is kind of going to be the way that your, the email gets formatted when it's sent to you. Now, oh, I should I should say one more thing. The from, you don't want to use the person's email address who submitted the form because it's going to probably get flagged as spam because you're not them. So you can't send email from somebody that you're not. But the other issue you have, and this is just going to, it's going to drive you crazy. But when you get these emails in your inbox, and you you uh, reply to them if you don't have this set properly to uh, you you need to have this set either as their email address or you have to compose a new email when you send it to them I think that's gonna make sense so if you hit the reply button it's going to try to re send it to yourself so you need to you just need to know when you get a contact form from the email that you need to send it to the person's email address who is in the form itself so you can see here we have this uh, alright so we'll just delete all this we'll leave that one thing right there but you can add these things in like this and you can do something like uh, the letter they selected was and then you can say leave a little bit of space and you can say the number and what this is going to do is this is going to format the email that is sent to you from the contact form. Their favorite car is. And then, and so on and so forth. So you can format this however you want that the information that comes in is going to be, is going to be broken down a little bit. You can use HTML and all that stuff. And uh, there's a, a thing here if you want an autoresponder and stuff like that. So we're just going to save that. And then the thing we can put here is what do we want it to say like when it's something was sent. So we can say, uh, thanks for your message has been sent. You can update these, these fields. And then finally, additional settings if you can look in here and get some other information for some things that you can put in uh, into, like say for instance, if you don't want to skip, if you don't want to send a mail or something like that, you can do that. So like, let's do that. Since since I don't have email configured, I'm gonna put skip mail on and great, save it. Now what would happen is over here, I'll refresh the form and I'm going to select C and I'm going to select two and I'm gonna say Ford and I'm gonna say 1127. 1984 uh, because it's on my birthday and then I'm going to say Mrs. Smith and I'm going to submit and now thank you for your submit your message it has been sent so that's pretty much most of what you need to know about making a contact form and using contact form 7 um, in the beginning you may have a few issues with the emails that are sent from your website go into your spam folder uh, mark them as not spam and usually after a couple attempts at that you'll get it right if you do have problems sending your emails you may want to talk to your hosting provider and they might have something flagged preventing you from sending emails uh, but if you're only sending them to yourself it's not really a problem so I do want to talk to you about a couple other things real quick is that if you come in here to plugins and add new and type in contact form uh, contact form you will see that in addition to the plugin that we have, there are other options. Like this is contact form seven conditional field. So if you need more complicated logic, here's a plugin. And there's a few other plugins and you would want one uh, redirection uh, database add-on. There's all kinds of little things that people have made to expand contact form seven if it doesn't do everything you want it to do, MailChimp and, and all that. So. Um, this is a good option now I personally use a different form builder and I'm going to show it to you in a separate video it'll probably be something like GoPro with WordPress or something along those lines but um, just know that there are extensions in here if you're willing to uh, to play around with adding some plugins and see how they work so anyway I hope that's helpful thanks for watching